Take a good look at this diagram. Does this make sense? Do you know what is going on here? If not, no worries. By the end of this video, you will. Today, we're talking use case diagrams. We're gonna come back to that diagram. Have you ever had the uh, great opportunity of working on a project where miscommunication and different understandings about a system or process led to headaches and confusion? This was a real problem in the 1980s. As software became more complex, it made it more challenging to ensure systems were well understood throughout the entire development process. That's when Ivar Jakobsen came up with a breakthrough. What if there was a visual way to capture system behavior and user interactions? I'm Eric Wadrayo, and in this video, we are breaking down use case diagrams, and we're gonna show you how to use them to streamline communication on your projects. A use case diagram is a visual representation of how users interact with the system. It shows what the system does, but not how it does it. Jakobsen, a Swedish computer scientist, is credited with formalizing the concept of use case diagrams while working at Ericsson in the 1980s. His goal was to create a modeling language that focused on user-centered design and how systems interact with external users. Think of a use case diagram as a layout for how your system is gonna work in the real world without having to add all the technical details. All right, so now we know what a use case diagram is, let's dive into the building blocks that make it work. You have actors, use cases, and relationships. Let's look at each of these elements separately so that you can create a clear and effective use case diagram for your own projects. If you wanna clarify who's responsible for what within your system and how different types of users interact with it, then actors is where you're gonna start. Actors are these little stick figures. Yes, I said stick figures. I mean, it was the 1980s, he's a developer not Picasso. Actors are stick figures representing users, roles, or external systems. So going with the example of a online food ordering system, the actors would be the customer, admin, and payment process. Building on the actors we identify, let's explore what actions they take within the system. Here's where use cases come in. Use cases are ovals representing the core functionalities of the system. Think of them like the verbs of your system or the actions of your system, right? So these are the verbs. The actors are the nouns. Come on, somebody, let's see if we can keep these uh, parts of speech analogies going. So in our food ordering system example, use cases include actions like browse menu, place order, update profile, and submit payment. By focusing on use cases, you're making sure that your team is crystal clear on what the system should accomplish, not just its technical details. All right, so now we are making progress, right? We have the key players, which are the actors. We have their actions, which are the use cases. The final piece of the puzzle is understanding how everything connects. And this is where relationships come into play. And unfortunately, this is also where our parts of speech analogies end. If you're struggling to visualize how these different pieces in your system interact, then relationships are gonna be key to bringing clarity to the bigger picture. Relationships are the lines and arrows showing the interaction between actors and use cases. They can represent things like includes, extends, and other associations. Think of relationships as the traffic flow of your system, dictating how users navigate and accomplish their goals. So for example, a customer can include the use case of update profile as part of their place order journey. An admin might have an extends relationship with the managed inventory use case, giving them additional permissions beyond the regular customer. All right, so now that we kind of have the building blocks, right, for use case diagrams and can see how they come together, let's explore some of the best practices for creating clear and effective diagrams to enhance your project communication. Use consistent shapes, fonts, and lines throughout your diagram. This improves the readability and makes it easier for everyone to understand. All right, so the second one is gonna to be to match the level of details to your needs. For your initial discussions, you can start with a basic diagram. As the project progresses, then you can add more details as needed. And this next one actually ties to the previous one, and that is consider your audience. Again, tailor the level of details to the complexity of your audience's understanding. A technical team might need a more in-depth view than stakeholders unfamiliar with your system. All right, so let's take another look at this diagram. Let me know if it now makes sense to you. Let us know in the comment section below. If we did help you understand use case diagrams a little better, would you mind hitting us with a like and subscribe? Now that you're armed with the knowledge of use case diagrams, you're ready to start using them in your own projects. Whether you're working on software development, business processes, or any complex system, use case diagrams can bring clarity and alignment to your team. 
And of course, remember with Draw.io, creating clear and effective use case diagrams is a breeze. Not only can it save you time, reduce misunderstandings, but the best part is you can get started with Draw.io today for free for 30 days. Just head over to the Atlassian Marketplace to get set up. If you'd like to learn more about UML, don't forget to subscribe and check our blog in the description. Until next time, keep diagramming.